Good morning. This short presentation today is going to clear the concept of homoscedasticity and heteroscedasticity in a very simple way. These terms are big, sometimes even daunting, but the concepts are really easy and easy to understand, easy to comprehend. Let's start the procedure. Suppose we have taken 9 days observation in a stock market and the stock market we are trying to predict what is going to be the closing at the day end and at the day end we are writing down predicted value, actual value and the residual value. Residual value is the difference, absolute difference between the predicted and the actual. So we are repeating this procedure for 9 consecutive trading sessions back to back without any break. And we found it like this, like day 1 predicted 43,566 but the actual was 43,666. So the difference is 100. Similarly day 7 34,550 and 34,650 so again the difference is 100. If you observe carefully here, all these residuals, all these residuals have the same value, that is 100. Homoscedasticity means the residuals are either same or equal to 0. Equal to 0 means obviously predicted and actual value both are equal, so there is no difference. So if predicted is 43,000, actual is also 43,000. So the difference is zero. So homoscedasticity means, what I am now showing is homoscedasticity. Homoscedasticity means that residuals are exactly the same for continuous sessions. This is theoretical. I am not saying whether it is practical or not. It is one of the assumptions of linear regression or OLS, ordinary least square. Ordinary least square says that when the error term, residual is an error term because we are not exactly predicting the predicted value. There is a gap between the predicted value and the actual value. So statistician call residual as an error term. So they call the error term has zero variance. Zero variance means it is not varying. It is constant. So in other way, error term is constant. So either error term is constant or error term is equal to zero. That is called homoscedasticity. In another video, we will understand whether it is logically possible or not, whether it is possible in real life or not, whether it is at all possible or not. Those debates, understandings, real life knowledge that will come in another video, not this video. This video is to establish what is the concept of homoscedasticity. So what is heteroscedasticity? Heteroscedasticity is, so suppose here 53,666, this becomes 766. So this gap becomes 200. Then suppose here 39,600 and 39,900. So that means the gap becomes 300. Then suppose here, 41,200 and 41,000, suppose 700, 700 and 200, the gap is suppose 500. Then suppose here, this is 41,000. So 41,000 uh, and uh, this is 100. So 40,100 and 41,100, that means 1000, like this. And uh, suppose here 921 and this is actually 221 and this is 821, so this is 600. Here suppose 788 and 688, suppose this is 288 and 788, so this is 500. Remember I am taking the absolute difference, not the plus or minus sign is there, okay. So now what we are seeing is called heteroscedasticity. That means the error term or the residual error term is changing, error term is varying. 
So day one error term is 200, day 200, day three 500, day four again back 200, day 5000. So the error term is a function of time. So that is why we write it like ET with a T as prefix. Error term is a function of time. So homoscedasticity says the error term is having zero variance or the error term itself is zero, which is a continuous factor. But heteroscedasticity says the error term has a varying factor over a period of time. It varies over a period of time. Heteroscedasticity is often hated by the statisticians because it is against the assumption of the OLS. So if heteroscedasticity is proven, then obviously the concept of OLS is questioned. It is the concept is basically under question, under threat. That is why they generally don't like heteroscedasticity. They like homoscedasticity. So we will understand what is the implication in finance in another video. What is the meaning in finance about homoscedasticity, heteroscedasticity and how we develop arch model which is autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity and garch model which is generalized autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity in some later videos. Thank you for watching this video.